What kind of LaCroix is that? Key lime. It's delicious. Another one of the really good ones. HFC kids and families, we are on season two, episode three of Kids Lessons Online. So excited. We have gone through so much, like so much. And we started with the book of Genesis. We had Genesis and then we did Exodus and the Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy. And now we've made it to the book of Joshua. We're on the sixth book of the Bible. We're making our way through. And actually today's passage comes from both the book of Numbers and the book of Joshua. And we're going through to one of the biggest moments in the Israelites history. Everything has been building up to this point. So I figured I'd give you guys a little bit of a highlight reel of where we've been so far. HFC kids, we ready? We good? Camera's on? Did it. You might have heard of Abraham or Abram, either one. It's the same guy. We're gonna be talking about him. I come from Abraham and Abraham has 10 camels, which means Abraham's really rich. So at this point, Isaac is really, really old. And so is Rebecca. It's never too late to still follow him, to recognize that he is stronger than you are and that he can still use you. Our bottom line for this week is, when you feel alone, you can trust that God is always with you. If you do the letters, the words that start with B, I will let you use Bobby, our cameraman. His name's Bobby. You can use that as one of your B words if that's the way you want to go. There's your little cheat. There's the Pharaoh. And then there's Joseph. They're like top dogs running Egypt together. So come on, come with me, grab your suitcase. We're going on a trip. <laughs> Welcome to Egypt. We have made it safe and sound. And we are going to learn about what Joseph was doing here in Egypt during the time of the famine. <sighs> there's a baby. Okay, now listen, this isn't an actual baby. Don't worry, it's, it's, it's just a, it's a, it's a panda. But we're gonna pretend it's a baby. When God's fighting a battle, he never loses. God's not gonna lose. Okay, that might not have given you a lot of information about where we've been so far. We started with the story of Abraham and how Abraham was just like a normal dude. And God called him to go somewhere new and promised him that he would have thousands and millions of descendants that would number the stars, as well as go to a promised land. And this land was going to be beautiful and wonderful, and that was going to be Abraham's descendants' new home. But some stuff happened along the way. His grandsons were twins, Jacob and Esau, and when they argued and lied and deceived each other and everything was messy, we talked about that, that split up and spread the people out a little bit. And then Jacob had 12 sons, which spread out a little bit more. And they ended up having to go down to Egypt to survive a famine with Jacob's son, Joseph. And we talked for a long time about Joseph. Well. After they had lived with Joseph in Egypt for 400 years, they had become slaves and they were treated really badly by the Egyptians. So God gave them a way out. He helped them, he fought battles for them, and he taught them that he was in charge and he was going to take them to the promised land. So now, they're there, they're about to go into the wilderness, or they're about, they're in the wilderness, about to go into the promised land. And this is where our story begins. I'm in the book of Numbers today, and they have been wandering in the wilderness, about to get to this promised land. And God decides, not God, Moses, decides to send spies into the land so that they could go off and see a glimpse of how beautiful it's going to be and then come back and report to the people 
and get them excited about the fact that they were going into this wonderful promised land. Finally, after hundreds of years, they were able to go. And when they got there, there were people already there in the way. And God had been promising them this for years. And he had brought them out of Egypt and he gave Abraham a son when Abraham wasn't supposed to have kids. And he helped them cross the Red Sea and he gave them food and he took care of them in all these different ways. This was it, this was their moment, but they got scared. The spies came back and they were terrified. And they said, these men are too big, everything's too crazy. There were like 12 of them all, and 10 of them were talking about how terrible it was. And then the other two, Joshua and Caleb. You might remember Joshua from last week's story. Joshua and Caleb said, actually, if God has been promising us this land, we shouldn't be scared. But the people weren't listening to Joshua and Caleb. They were listening to the guys complaining about how hard it was gonna be and how it was impossible and how they might die. So the people are complaining and they're saying, God's given up on us, he's abandoned us, we're not gonna make it, we're not gonna make it. Moses, you're gonna get us all killed. And finally, uh, Joshua and Caleb stood up in front of all the people in Numbers chapter 14, verses eight and nine. Joshua and Caleb stood up and said, if the Lord delights in us, he will bring us to this land and give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their protection is removed from them and the Lord is with us, so we cannot fear them. Well, they didn't want to listen to Joshua and they didn't want to listen to Caleb and they just complained. And finally God said, I have done so much for you guys. Excuse me, excuse me. I have, I, I, I gave you kids. I gave you food. I sent the plagues to the Egyptians, but not to you. I got you through the wilderness. I, or through the Red Sea. I defeated Pharaoh's army, the most important valuable, like powerful army. I won battles and he even promised in last week's lesson that the, the Amalek's men were, they were never going to have to worry about them again. And that's who was in the land. And there, and he's like, I've already told you that you don't have to worry about Amalek. I'll take care of it. Just go. And the people were like, we're not going. We're not going, we're not listening. We're not listening to you, God. You're just gonna get us killed. We're not going, we're not going. We're gonna stay here. It's not, we're, yep, nope, we don't wanna die. We don't wanna die, we don't wanna go there. We're not gonna listen. And so Moses and Aaron, their hearts were broken. Joshua and Caleb were confused. Why wouldn't they trust God? Why were they saying they wanted their way, but not God's way? So finally, God comes and says, all of you that are complaining, we can just wait. We'll just wait here in the wilderness. And when all of you guys are done complaining or when you've died, when you've gotten old and died, and the younger ones, you know, like Joshua and Caleb and their people, the young guys, when they're old enough to lead, then we'll go in. But y'all that are in Moses' generation, y'all that came from Egypt, no, 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 not worth it. You don't trust me anymore. You're not following, you're not listening, you're not obeying. Fine, you can die here in the wilderness, and then when Joshua's in charge, then we'll go to the promised land. So the people were upset and they changed their mind and all that, but God said, no, too late, too late. You're not going. We're gonna wait here until you guys all die off or change your minds, and then we're going to let Joshua take the new group in. So that's where we are, Joshua. We're in the book of Joshua. It's the sixth book of the Bible. And in Joshua chapter one, it says that Moses has died, as did a lot of those people that were complaining, those people that weren't trusting God, those people that were disobedient. And now the big top people in charge were like Joshua and Caleb, the ones that were actually doing what they were supposed to be doing. So we're in Joshua chapter one, verse one. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise, go over the Jordan, you and all these people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. And he's like, this is it. 
the time has come. You are going into the promised land. And the people, instead of complaining like their parents did and the older people did, the young people, this new generation, said, uh, in, they answered to Joshua when he said they were going. Instead of complaining in verse 16, it said, they answered Joshua, all that you have commanded us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we obeyed Moses in all things, so we will obey you. May only the Lord God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your commandment and disobeys your word, whatever you command him shall be put to death. Put to death, only be strong and courageous. So this is the people saying, if you tell us to go, we'll go. We'll trust in God and we'll pray that God is with us because when God is on our side, we can be strong and we can make it and we're going to go into this promised land and we're going to win and we're going to own it and Israel will reign and it's going to be awesome. And honestly, that's what the first group should have done. When God said the first time we're going to take you in, they should have been like, okay, God, you're in charge. Let's go. I trust you, God. But no, they complained. These people, the next generation, changed it completely. So, you guys, you guys are the young people, right? Either you are parents of young people, which means you're one of the younger generations, or you are the kids, which means you're like the youngest generation. One of the things we can learn from this is just because people that are older than us didn't do the right thing doesn't mean we have to do the wrong thing. Just because they didn't listen doesn't mean we don't listen. Our generation, the, the, your parents' generation, my generation, you guys' generation, your age group can change the world. This group was the one that came in, they trusted God, they believed, and they're the ones that got rewarded for it. They're the ones that made it to the promised land. Everybody's decision is different, but they remembered how great God was. Is, God still is great. Think about some ways that God is great in your life. Some things he's done for you, some amazing things that he's doing right now. Don't forget those. Because when you hold on to those things, you can be the generation that changes the world. It's kind of crazy to think about. What is the most amazing thing that you can do? I want you to answer that. Say it right now. What is the most amazing thing you think you can do? Maybe you'll go to Mars someday. Maybe you'll be the president of the United States. Maybe you'll be a famous big general doing amazing things. Or maybe you're going to be a mom or a dad to an amazing family that loves the Lord. Maybe you're going to be a school teacher that teaches kids about love and caring and kindness. They can change the world. No matter what you do with your life, whether it's big or it may seem small, you can make changes that can change the world. Because these people listened, the Israelites were able to move into the promised land. We're gonna talk about that more next week. But this week, I just want you to spend some time reviewing all the promises that God had. Those links will be in the description. Some of the promises that God made, all the things that he had brought them through, and now they get to be the ones to remember that and make a change. HFC kids, we will see you next week when our grand finale of this journey to the promised land comes along. When we actually get to see what happens when you're following God and you're excited to trust in Him and God fulfills His promises. See you guys next week. It's gonna be so fun, I'm so excited. <laughs>
because I've been talking about Abraham since like March and we spent March, April, May, in June, in July, and now we're in August and we're finally starting to see it all play out. It's finally all coming together. Like the finale of a really great TV show, except it's in the Bible and it really happened. I'm so excited. Ugh, I'm so excited. <laughs>